Welcome to the Affordable DC Generator YouTube channel. This is a multi-part series with part one being the first steps in building a power box. And what a power box to me is, it's a source of power. Obviously we have a battery inside that's going to give me some capability to run various things like lights, a radio, and some other accessories like my portable refrigerator and maybe some charging of uh, radios, handheld devices, and also uh, my DeWalt cordless tool set. So this is a really large multi-purpose, kind of think of it as the Swiss army of power sources when I'm on the go or when the utility's out or when I'm just camping or something like that. And obviously I want to do this at a price point that's way lower than the Goal Zero products out there, which I think are way overpriced for what they are and a little misleading on their advertisement based on their capacities. But nevertheless, let's get into this. I'm shooting from up in the bedroom today because it is very hot out and this is the only place with air conditioning that has good enough light. So let's get into it. So I decided to go with the Rigid Toolbox, which is on sale typically around the holidays at the big box stores like Home Depot. Uh, it's readily available, there's multiple sizes, and it really works for what I need it to do because on the inside there's plenty of space to mount things. It's got a nice O-ring seal. It's pretty rugged for what it is, and the price point is really good. So the multiple sizes allow me to kind of outfit what I need. This particular case, I'm going to have a battery on the inside. I've got a radio, some switches, and some lights. So this is going to be really the one that goes in the vehicle, the work truck, out camping, etc. And then I've got some bigger and smaller boxes that are going to do some other things that I'll get into shortly. So when choosing the toolbox to make your power box out of, Obviously, you got to pick what accessories you're going to want on this and then figure out the real estate. Where's everything going to fit? So, for example, on this end, I've got some lights. I've got a push button that's going to turn my lights on and off, and then I've got my speakers for the radio. This end of it is a little difficult to work with because we have some recesses and ridges to deal with. Uh, a 4x6 speaker would fit perfectly inside of here, so I wouldn't have to really grind any of this away. The downside is that 4x6 speakers are not very easy to find, and they're even more rare if you want one that has a grill. So this is a five and a quarter, and it works great because a four and three quarter inch hole saw makes the perfect hole for this speaker with just a little bit of grinding here. This one fits perfectly, and a five and a quarter you can find pretty much anywhere. Over here I've got some LED lights. These are very low output and a simple weatherproof on off push button, which is all I want because I'm gonna have a master switch for all my lights and then I can push my button on and off depending on where I want my lights to light up on the box. Up front is pretty much the business end of this unit. So I bought a marine and RV switch plate. So I've got my illuminated on off rockers with a resettable circuit breaker of various sizes. And then I have a cigarette lighter, the USB, and then the power works connectors. And this is what I'm going to use to connect either uh, a solar charger, which is gonna go directly into the battery, or uh, my DC refrigerator. So I can go right to these and any other 12 volt device that I wanna stay away from using the cigarette lighter adapter because obviously these are a lot more rugged. The big thing is that I chose not to put a solar charger internally in this unit because I wanted to have a panel with the charger built into it. So that way I could not only connect here, but then I could make a set of alligator connectors and use that solar panel to charge a battery or something like that elsewhere. So it's not committed to this device. So these are a really great universal option for a lot of different 12 volt accessories. Up top, same thing. I've got my lights with a push button on off. So that way if I want my front lights to come on, I've got them on an independent control. Down here, I've got a Boss Marine radio. So this fits perfectly into a three inch hole, which is great because if you have a three inch hole saw, not a lot of grinding is required. This not only is a radio with Bluetooth and auxiliary input, uh, and also you can put a memory card in it, but it also also has the, the NOAA weather band radio channels. So again, while I'm out camping, I don't have to use an, uh, an external handheld radio for that. It's built right in. Opening up the inside, we're gonna get deeper into the actual wiring of this unit in the part two, but I kind of wanted to go over where the real estate value is taking place here. On the top, I've got a small pure sign inverter. So this one's gonna be 300 watts. This is great for charging cordless batteries or running a laptop or a television or something like that. Independent switch. So this is gonna go right to the battery. And then over here, I recessed out some of this ribbing for the power strip. 
So I'll probably attach this using some 3M5200 or something like that. That's going to be a pretty high bond. And then that's going to mount permanently in there. I took out the ribbing here as well so my power cord can sit. And that's going to plug directly into my inverter. And then I also drilled some holes, which you can see. So the power cord can run through that and I slotted it so I can get the cord in there and remove it at some point if I had to. But obviously it's good retention with just drilling a couple of holes. Now, inside the box, you can see that there's one major component missing in here and that's the battery. So I didn't know what I'm gonna go with just yet. Obviously, I would prefer to have a deep cycle AGM battery. I think lithium's probably gonna be out of the budget at this point. But I've got a lot of real estate left over. Now, a couple things I still need in here, obviously the wiring is one of them, but I need bus bars. So I don't wanna have hacked wiring. I want a positive and negative bus bar where I can make all my terminations in a very clean manner in case I wanna add or subtract anything down the road. The other thing I'm going to do is put a, a quick connect on the DC side. I'm gonna have two of them. So one, I can plug my affordable DC generator into it and recharge the battery, but also I can connect a larger battery bank to run all of these accessories off of, or I can directly connect using solar input and recharge my battery. So I want a lot of different options. I also want to be able to connect my other inverter. Now my other inverter is a pure sign with a built-in transfer switch, which means I have two cords, so I basically took a large extension cord, cut it in half, and I've got a power inlet and outlet. So basically I can go into a backup mode, I can plug this end into an outlet, and then I can plug this end into a load. That could be a stove, a refrigerator, a computer, anything. And when the power goes out, this unit will automatically kick in and supply AC power from the battery and back up my load. The situation occurs where this is, since it's a thousand watts, might need a larger battery bank than this. Not only for the surge, but also the capacity going uh, runtime. You know, if you want more than an hour or two at a larger load, you're gonna need way more battery than this. So what comes into play is that we're gonna need multiple quick connects. So this unit needs to be connected to a battery source like that. Now I can connect this to a car battery and run a car with a set of jumper cables. I could use those jumper cables to plug directly to this and run all my accessories off of the vehicle using the jumper cables. But also I can connect this to this power box and then use another quick connect from here to the affordable DC generator. So now I can run all of these accessories, recharge this battery and get the full capacity out of this. And I still don't have to bring a large battery bank with me because I can simply close the lid on that one, close the lid on that one and stack the two and lock them together, throw it in the back of my car. Bring my generator with me. If I don't have my generator, I can run them off my vehicle with the jumper cables. So again, everything is modular, customizable to what I need, off the shelf, nothing is customized here. And we're still well below price points of getting something like a Goal Zero Yeti. Uh, doesn't matter what battery or size you're getting to. I mean, 500 to $1,000 gives you an awful lot of wiggle room to purchase the equipment, the boxes, and all the wiring. So stay tuned to part two. We're gonna get into the wiring, which is in here. Uh, I'll finally go with a battery selection. This is a group 26 that's very common on home standby generators, which I have a dozen of them that are perfectly good used units. This is a starting battery, so not exactly the best decision to put that in here. It'll get me going, but obviously I wanna have something that's probably a AGM and probably a little bit bigger with more capacity. I've got plenty of room thinking maybe a group 31, We'll see. Once I get everything mounted and wired up, we'll figure out exactly how much real estate we have to play with, wire it up, and then we'll take it into the real world and do some testing. Stay tuned, guys.